Anyway, but I want to catch... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've, right, I've just had a big bounce on the crab bait. A massive bounce. Right, I'll be back. Just a very quick intro. Spare at the moment fishing trip. I'll explain what's going on. We're on the Conway Estuary. There's the Conway Castle. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon now. It's high water. Um, I finished early from work. and I was like, you know what? I'm going fishing. Got the gear there. I've brought plenty of baits. I've got crab cart, peeler crab, some lug, some squid. It's high water now. I'm going to fish it for a couple hours here. I've been told by my good pal, by that muscle barge, there's a couple of deep channels and it's been doing cod. As I say, I'm a bit, it's a bit clear, it's a bit flat calm at the moment when it starts to flow, maybe. And we're going to go back up to the other side where I've been fishing, up by the extension, by the golf course, later on and fish the night tide down there later. I've told the wife I'll be back at nine o'clock tonight with a Chinese. So I've got, what, seven hours fishing from now. Now, you might say to me, why do you keep fishing the Conway Estuary? Because everybody apart from me is catching cod from here. I know it done free cod last night. Just over there. Just over there. I know it done it. And I know it's done cod through the bridge within the last few days. So, like, it's on my doorstep. It's about three minutes. I think it's about two and a half minutes, three minutes drive from my house. That's why I'm here. It's a lovely, comfortable mark. Um, you can see there's fishermen been here. You can see bits of bait and stuff on the floor. But, uh... It's a comfortable mark. We're going to give it a couple hours here. So the rods are set up now. The left rod, which is going to be going down in the main flow a bit, pretty much where that cormorant is down there, has got a peeler crab on, on a pulley rig. Just one hook on the pulley with a peeler. Uh, very juicy, that. It's not going to last long. It's going to be washed out within 10 minutes or so in the water, so I'll be checking that after 10 minutes. That's got an 8-ounce gripper on because that's going to be down in the flow down there. It's more sandy here with a few channels. So I've decided on this one, just to see if I can nick something. It's just a two up flapper rig uh, with bits of worm on. The worm ain't the best, to be honest. It's been in and out the freezer a few times. It's still frozen flat, but what can you do? I've just got a six ounce gripper on this one because I know it's sandy and it's probably about eight, 10 foot deep out there now. So I'm just gonna have a scratch about with that. And uh, this is for the big fish. I'll be putting some, some wraps and stuff on there and a bit, some squid and some cars. But uh, I did want to fish off here. I did really want to fish off here with the tripod look at all the mussels on the floor there look at all them there's a lot of bite around here there's a lot of bite around here which is good but i did want to fish off here and fish bang bang but you can see how icy it is and when this river flows it absolutely gushes and you know no fish is worth putting anything at danger in my opinion so i'm just going to be staying this side of the railings over there but yeah we're going to get them rods in look at all the cormorants there this is the mussel barge where my pal told me to fish he said, by that mussel barge, there's a mussel bed and there's some deep channels and everything fishes around there. So literally, my left rod is going to go somewhere over there towards the flow. My right rod's that side. But yeah, we got it. We got all angles covered, I believe. Well, I say the estuary doesn't fish that well when there's fresh water coming in. I'm guessing that's the melt from the ice and the snow we've been having lately. This could be a lot harder than I thought, people. But we're giving it seven hours solid. <laughs> if I blank, I'm going to blank knowing I couldn't have done any more, put it that way. Go on, it's got to be worth a subscribe for the effort, any people. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> I actually end up fishing three marks on this video and staying out a lot lighter than I should. I'll start off here by the Conway Castle, then end up at the top end of the mouth to the river by the golf courses, and then I end up on Anglesey fishing Moly Don on the River Menai. So stay tuned, people. We've got a lot of angles covered here. Let's just hope we can get some fish. Just recording for a video. <laughs> I hope it's a long play, huh? <laughs> it's a bit slow, yeah? Oh, it's uh, not been doing so bad at Lion's Rock, you know, we've done yet. That's where, back today. that's where I'm going for the night tide later. Is it? Yeah, there's been a few cod as well, my pal's yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes you wonder sometimes just how important it is and that you should enjoy life, don't it? Just talking to that old boy, he hasn't finished fished for years. It's on about he lost his wife, who used to fish with him all the time, and he can't bear to get the stuff out and that. And he's in a, his head's in a bad place and that. I've literally just said, if you want to get out and do some fishing, like, <laughs> you know, get in touch. Here's my number. I spoke to him. And he's like, I'd love to get out. But every time I start cleaning the stuff and getting it ready, I see a rod and that and I can't get out. And I, I know from personal experience being in a very, very bad place for a few times that um, getting out with a fishing rods can help. It can really, really help. It can clear the mind. So I've just spoke to him and told him if he wants a lift, if he wants to come fishing, even if it's just for half an hour to get out. Uh, he just shook my hand. He was like, thank you, young man, thank you. He's 86. He looks fit for 86, to be fair. I wouldn't have put him at that age. 
but um, so he used to fish all up and down here and everything all over the area but, um, just literally had a chat to him for about 30 40 minutes people shouldn't suffer on their own with nobody like that hence why I've offered him out but anyway less of that that's me babbling on um, been here about an hour and a half now not a bite uh, I was going to check the bites because uh, that crab was nearly washed out or I reckon it would have been washed out but um, obviously I wasn't going to check the bites when I was talking to the to the old boy and that so uh, we'll have a little check now and see what's going on yeah <laughs> well that's definitely not the crab that I chucked out but way up and you took up Trying to get my finger look. Wait! <laughs> he nearly had my finger. <laughs> that's definitely not the crab I chucked out. It's tangled me up a bit, but that's all that's left. Um, so yeah, we'll have to change bites every 10 or 15 minutes now. I could have potentially had not been fishing for the last hour. <laughs> but you know me, people. I ain't serious. I just get out and have a laugh. Um, I've only caught a whiting in my last three or four trips. <laughs> you know, you, you, what you see with me is what it is. So I just get out and enjoy fishing. All looks have been stripped. You know, I am kind of kicking myself now. Everybody knows I only do it for a laugh. There was a crab on this one with no bait on. The other hooks have been stripped. Um, lesson learned. I've probably not been fishing at all for the last hour. I'll be changing baits every 10 or 15 minutes now. You learn from your mistakes, yeah? Let's get the rods back out, see if we can get a bite. Well, two hours later, the rigs are hooked up on the rods. No bites. Kept having my bait stuck. But what I've took the time to do over the last hour is um, prepare some bait. I'm preparing for later. Squid, cart, there's crab in every one. I'll try and put a bit of squid in every one somewhere because what I find is when you put the hook in and bind it on later, the squid is like really tough. So it, the hook sits in place with the squid. So the squid is there literally to keep the hook in position. Uh, I've used smaller baits. As people have been saying, I've been using massive baits in the past, six, eight inch long and as fat as your quarry. But... Um, finger size baits now which is what everybody's saying so you know i'm learning as i go people you know me i don't claim to be an expert and know everything i just learn as i go i'm gonna be putting these out like that uh, we're gonna be fishing oh i don't know if you can see let me zoom in people my hands are that dirty and cold i don't know if my phone will work on the edge out there casting into well the mouth to the estuary basically it's a lovely evening people cold it ain't gonna put freezing all day but um awesome you know what i mean awesome lovely place the conway castle there it's got a bit of history that thing has here's the conway arbor so i'm going to get these rods packed up go and have a beer go and have some food and uh i'll see you all when we get to the other mark bloody hell my window screen is bloody filthy see it doesn't even work now is it defrosted yet no the water had defrosted that's how cold it is right, i was fishing just down there anyway people yeah so i'm going to put the camera on tripod now and uh, i'm going to show you this other spot this spot I'm going to now was actually the first ever time I went sea fishing. A couple of me pals took me here. It's literally just round the corner through the arches and down to the beach. I must give this another try again soon. Oh, let's have a look. I think the flow is just starting to turn now. We've got a lovely beachy bit around here too. Look at the ice and the frost on the floor. I might uh, have to go. I was literally fishing just the other side around that wall. <laughs> I'm up on my arse here now, people. You know this. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that beach over there. Let me just zoom in a little bit and show you. That sandy beach, yeah? It drops to the where are we? It drops down all the way to there, yeah? And then you've got the low river going through on low water. Cracking low water mark. Um, or do I go where I want? I've got to go and get some food anyway. It's, it's about, what, three, four o'clock now? I ain't got to pick the Chinese up for me and the wife until nine, so I've got plenty of time. Look at the spot, though. Like I say, it ain't got a buff freezing all day. Mm, do I have a go here, or do I go to where I know there's cod being caught? I think I've got to go to where the cod are being caught, and I. It would be silly to try something that you don't know nothing about when you know where they are coming out. Mm, right. 
time to go and get some food and get to the other mark. Well, that's it. That's going to last me four, five hours now till I get a Chinese later. All I had earlier was some wheat mix for breakfast. You know what it's like in my fishing videos, people. McDonald's, KFC, or kebab or pizzas. You know how we roll. <laughs> but um, yeah. How can I explain that last session? We um, it's good chatting to that old boy. To be fair, I hope he comes out. But um. Bites was being stripped. It's done what two, two and a half hours now. What not happen? So uh, we're going to head to the estuary now. I'm probably not going to put a rod until it's dark. I'll uh, get the bites on at the van. I'm only fishing like 15, 20 meters from the van. I might even sit in the van if it's cold and watch the rod tips. You know what I mean? Um, set the clutch a little bit so the rods can't go in. I might. That's, I might actually do that. To be fair, sit in the van, play on my phone, wait for a bite. <laughs> you know me, people. Well, that's the first time I've seen ice on the sands. <laughs> Bloody hell. Right, here we are, the Conway Estuary. It's just started um, ebbing now, just started going out. I'll put old scrap box there. Should have parked on the car park, but I'm not blacking anything. There's a clean run down, should anything need to come out in an emergency. So I'm gonna leave Scrappy there. I'm gonna set my tripod up there, and I'm probably gonna sit in the van, because <laughs> I'm a lazy mofo. But yeah, um, see how we go in it, see how we go. It's just started ebbing, I think it's about R4 now, something like that, R4, 5, I don't know. No, it's had dark here, it's probably about 4. Uh, we'll fish it out for a few hours. We've got them bites made, we've got two rods, we'll position it there, we'll see what happens. So the rods have been in about 20 minutes, nothing yet. Um, there's a lot of pull. You can see how the rod's bending over on the left. There is a lot of pull. Um, I'm up the van doing some rigs, making some bites and stuff, but uh, the rods are totally safe here, they can't go nowhere. Um, it's wedged in, got this big rock on there, and should I get a bite? And same with that one, look. So the rods can't, the, it's impossible for something to take the rods in. Uh, I'll see a few bounces and I can be back down here. But uh, yeah, the left rod's got the little torque flapper on with some bits, the right one's got a big crab and cart bait on. Um, like I said, it's, it's nice easy fishing like this because you can um, you can sit in the van with a clutch set. Obviously, you've got no worries about losing your gear. Um, it's you know there's not many snags. It's pretty sandy and flat out there. So like if you, if you by the time you've seen a bite from the van and got down, the fish will only be somewhere around here. It can't really go nowhere. Um, and if it's a big fish, it'll just take line. So it's it's pretty easy. It doesn't you can't really mess it up. Put it that way. <laughs> you don't have to be on your odds and hitting them fast. Time to put another bait in. Crab cart, squid, and lug. That's on the pulley panel. On the two-hook flapper. Just got a little bit of squid. We just put a little bit of squid on there. I'm having a bit of a problem, to be fair. Uh, the weed is wiping me out. I've only been fishing 15, 20 minutes, and the weed is absolutely wiping me out. Um, yeah, the rod's been bending over. It's only a small tide and the rod has been hoofing over. Oh, put the torch off. <laughs> the rod has been hoofing over and I've been like, what's going on here? It's a small tide. And I'm pulling in literally big bundles of weed. And I know from experience and I know from what the other people have told me, if there's wind, if there's weed in the river, you might as well pack up and go home. But I'm going to give it another hour because I'm here now and I don't really want to jack. I want to give it 100%. We fished the other night till one, two o'clock in the morning. I'm going to fish tonight for another few hours. I'm, I, you know, I don't want to jack. I'm giving it everything. I'm fishing. I'm fishing hard. Do you want to laugh, people? I've got to watch how I'm wording this. Um, right next to my car up there, so the other number plate, there's an old lady next to me. She must be 60, 65. She's knitting and she's blasting out other. Now, there's about seven car parks around here. There's loads of different ramps and places to view the estuary. And she's pulled. T literally touching my side door to the point where she could get from her door to my side door without even touching the floor she could step um, and she's blasting Abra out while she's knitting so I'm in the van with the eating on now uh, the old deer's gone now to me rods down there waiting for one of them lights there just to go boom <laughs> come on okay then it's not looking good to be honest <laughs> these are the last two casts I've pulled in everything's just completely weeded out and anybody who fishes the estuary will know when there's weed around you might as well go home i don't want to give in though <laughs> i know i'm fighting a losing battle i know i'm fighting a losing battle because the baits are getting covered with weed within two or three minutes of being in i just i just don't want to give in 
just don't want to give in people oh well not a thing's gone on down the ashtray it's now i don't even bother my clock's wrong in the van i had to reset the battery the other day uh it's about seven o'clock now been fishing for six seven hours um not a bite but i'm off to anglesey i've decided i'm going for it i've just spoke to the missus she's called i'm going to molly don uh, i've got about a 40 minute trip now i've literally got two or three casts on each rod i can get there for low water and i'm going to fish from the ramp i'm not going to wade across the beach or start going out in my way it's not on my own at this time of night um in the dark definitely not i'm going to fish from the van and um or fish close to the van and i'm going to try and get a fish people i am trying so hard <laughs> You know what I mean? I am trying, but yeah, we're off to Anglesey now. We're taking a mission over the island, over the Menai Bridge and everything. Um, like, I can't do no more, people. I can't. I'm going to try and get a fish for you tonight, okay? If it don't happen in Anglesey, I'll put, I don't know, eight or nine hours fishing in again, three different venues, 30 quid's worth of bait, 20 quid's worth of diesel, if not more. I can't try no more. I'm giving it everything. I'm just having a bad run. If you look back in the summer, I had the big bass. I had bolos after bolos after bolos after bolos. We had all the ras. I've been in Amlick. I've had conger after conger after conger. You know, I can catch fish. I'm just struggling the last month or so, but I'll put it right. I'm off to Molly Don on my own. I'll see you when I get to Anglesey. So here we are, just coming up to Molly Don. Uh, I can, well, I think it's safe to say there's nobody else here because I have just had to battle an ice ring to get down to this mark. Uh, I don't even know if the van's going to get back up, to be honest. It was like, there was like sludge, ice, water, everything. Um, I come down the road about 15 mile an hour tops all the way and it was treacherous. Right, we're going to park the van here. As I say, I'm only fishing from here off the van tonight. I'm on my own. I'm not going to be wading out. I'm not going to be going on any beaches or anything like that because safety first. So I'm here now. No, it is what it is, isn't it? <laughs> it is what it is. I've got literally enough for a couple of casts on each rod. You can see the tide comes up to here. The water's about there now, the water line. Um, yeah, we're going to have a couple of casts. I've only got an hour here. I've drove 40 minutes, so I have an hour's fishing to drive 40 minutes back. But I'm trying, people. Uh, this done a smoothie last week. <laughs> It is now the 14th of December, and last week it done a smoothie. Uh, not a big one, but probably no three or four pound. It done a smoothie. Uh, I've drove here with enough bait to have, and it does loads of rays as well. And there's a load of cod coming out opposite over there, so we'll have a couple of chucks and see what happens. The only bait I've got here, uh, gotten scraps. Surprise, scrappy got down here with all that ice, you know. That like it doesn't look that bad here on the floor now. Up there, up the line on the higher ground up there, it is just complete ice, sludge, and snow. I don't even know how the van made it, but it did. <laughs> it did. Right, the bites we got. This is this is the only bite I've got for the evening, this people. We got a bit of crab cart. We've got a couple of sausages, a bit of squid, what we've got in there, a bit of squid and that. That is all I've got for the next hour, but I'm only here for an hour. I've drove 40 minutes to fish an hour and then get back down. So I'm gonna get the rod set up. Right then. <laughs> so the bite's going in the estuary tonight. This is the big fish rod. That's the uh, cart and crab and all the goodness. Look at that, you can see it coming out on my hands. Tipped with a little bit of squid just to make it look a little bit natural, you know. That's the big fish rod. That's the one I'm hoping that goes. On the other one, we've got that two up flapper. Funny enough, I haven't got snagged all night. I shouldn't have said that, should I? On this, on the top hook, it's got a bit of worm. See what's out there. And on the bottom hook, just wanged a bit of worm and squid and whatever on there, really. Let's get these baits out, yeah, and uh, let's see if we can turn it around. Let's see if we can make that session, which was no bites and boring and nothing, into a fish. I don't know, a flatty, a ray, a huss, a cod, even a whiting. Let's just get a fish. First time I've been fishing on Anglesey in months, to be honest. Like, as soon as I'm back here now on the manor, I'm like, I up? I thought I had a bite then on camera. I was just saying, I haven't been fishing in Anglesey for months. I've literally just put the rods out. I'm hoping you've seen that. That could have been a bite, that could. Yeah, yeah, bite on that rod. Right, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Well, I've just come back up to the van to get what bit of bait I've got left. Um, you can see where the eye tide was. You can see how you got the darker shade there and then from there upwards it's lighter so the eye tides come up to here um had that bite within literally seconds 
I'll, I'll give it 20 seconds of the rod being in. I had that bite. Um, that's just the that's just Anglesey, isn't it? North Wales Anglesey. Fished five, six, seven hours, whatever it was on Conway. Not even the top. Literally 30 seconds on Anglesey. Bang. So I've just gone to get the bite. I wasn't expecting to bite that quick, to be fair. Um, it's definitely a low water mark. We're coming up to low water soon. Look how calm it is. Um, that's the bite I've got. <laughs> we got what's in there. A couple of casts on each rod. Let me ride of here. But um, I am feeling confident of a fish from here. I'd be better. I'd feel more confident if I had mackerel because I've caught a lot of big os from here, bolos and stuff. I've not got no mackerel with me. But um, yeah, just look at look at the bark. My only worry is getting snagged because if you look down, it's just all weed and rocks. But sometimes you just got to deal with the snags, aren't you? But what an evening for it. Look at that, people. Well, I've been in about half hour now. I just had that one bite early on. A good bite as well. Um, but it is what it is. But I'm going to go and do a brew up the van. So what we're going to do, we're going to set these. So should something come along while I go and do a brew, my rods can't get lost. <laughs> Simple as that. I don't know if you can see in there, Whatever water was in there was froze solid. <laughs> oh, f in the hell. Oh, there's the handle to be kettle. There you go. How are we going to do this? Well, we've got a kettle with no handle, which is going to be impossible to pick up, but we're going to work it out. And we've got a kettle full of ice. All right, let's, let's get the water burn, and then we'll work out how to put it in the brew, yeah? <laughs> oh, I love it, I do. This is exactly how the trips happen, people. I engraved that cart myself as well, that one. I engraved that. <laughs> so here's my bust up kettle. Come to my rods down there, look. You see the two night lights there and there. The clutch is set, I'm just waiting for one of them to go bang. I'm gonna run down there like you sound bolt. I'm gonna do a front somersault like Tom Daly into the pool. And I'm gonna pull you a massive kipper out. <laughs> right, let's turn this up. Oh, I feel the heat off that. Right, I don't know how we can do this, people. Right, here we go. We'll work out how we're going to get it off when it's boiled. Oh, I need a warm brew, I do. Bloody hell. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. <laughs> yeah, what a trip, though. What a trip. But yeah, people, um, as I say, we put 100% effort into this. 100%. That's a bite, that is. A little bite on the left rod, bear with me. Nothing fantastic, just a... Probably a whiting. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. I, I, I do think about posting these videos out sometimes, you know, when I don't catch nothing or it's a blank or it's a poor session. And then sometimes I put them out and, like, the viewers will say, that's real fishing, we appreciate everything you do. And before you know it, I can post a video on a night and wake up with it on 10,000 views. And everybody's saying how real it is, no bullshit, proper fishing and all that. And then I'm looking at all these people that are catching big cod, regular, big this, and they're on like they're not even getting anywhere near the views that my blanks are getting. So I've got to be doing something right, innit? Just imagine what'll happen when I do start catching fish. <laughs> it's, me, it's me sugar and tea bags. This is the thing, people. I show real fishing, real stuff, real as it is, as it happens. It's just how we're rolling tonight. But yeah, the rods are down now. Just had a little tap on that, but it's winter fishing though, isn't it? Something's got to give in it, surely. This is what I'm dealing with, trying to wash the <laughs> cop out. It's full luck, it's all ice. That's all the water I've got in there to wash it out, look. Just one big block of ice, and that's been in the van for about three or four days. Oh, how we need a fish, people, how we need a fish. Milk first, or milk last. Because a lot of people say you can't put the milk in first, but every time I do somebody a brew, I always put the milk in first. And nobody's ever said to me once, I can taste that you put the milk in first. They hate it, they hate the milk going in first, but it ends up the same, doesn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody likes to do it, but you don't know the difference. Just had a couple of bounces on the left rod again, but I've only got little bites on. Uh, you can probably see it there. 
I've only got little bites on you. I've had the, the odd little ding, 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 probably whiting, little flatfish or something. The clutches are set, I can't lose my rods. Um, just waiting for that one to go bang, or at least a couple of good nods, but uh, nothing here either. Could be a blank, this one, people. Well, I've literally just run down to the rods. Um, within seconds of cutting the camera off, I was saying, um, do you put your milk in first or whatever, all that stuff. And I've looked over and the left rod's got bang, bang. I've run down here and it stopped. It was a proper bang, bang, though. It wasn't a little uh, tippity tap, you know what I mean? A little diggity ding, tippity tap, whatever you want to call it. It was a proper bump, bump. It's mad because all the bites are coming on the little rig, the little tilt flapper. On the right rod, which has got loads of crab, crab cast, peel of crab and everything, nothing. I'm desperate to get a fish from here for you tonight, people. I feel as if I owe it to... If you're still watching at this point on the video, I feel as if I owe it. And believe me, I'm going to give 100% for the next half hour hour for you. I really am. Because if you're still here at this point, you deserve a fish. <laughs> you do, because I don't want to show you a blank. But as, as I've said, I hope you all appreciate that it's real. And it is what it is, isn't it? It is what it is. But, uh, yeah. My brew's still boiling up there. I, literally, I looked over. I was watching around. It's just gone bang, bang. Don't eat on me, people. I know it's a whiting, but I can tell you I am buzzing with that. It stopped the blank. Um, that bite that was developing was a whiting. Um, yeah, I thought it was a little coddling at first because it gave me a couple of good nods and then I felt the weight coming in, but yeah, it was just a whiting. Um, it's not a bad whiting, to be fair. Decent, yeah? But uh, it is what it is. That stopped the blank anyway, but I want to catch... Whoa, whoa, whoa. I've, right, I've just had a big bounce on the crab bait. A massive bounce. Right, I'll be back, be back, be back. Well, nothing else happened on that bite. So it was time to put the white in back, which I dropped in the excitement. But that bite was a massive two wax. It almost hooped the rod over on the big crab bait. It just went bang, bang, and then nothing else. What I can't get my head over is look how clear this water is. It does not look like there's water there. Yeah, look at that. It is absolutely crystal clear as far as you can see that's probably about a foot and a half two foot of water there it's shockingly clear people look at that that doesn't look like water you can't even see the water let me show let me throw a brick in to show you never seen it so clear which is not good to be fair All right come on big fish rod because you did just have a big bang on it oh come on give us something special right then let's see what's going on here I've had some right occurrences, I've had that white in, I've had the big rod go over. I'd say that's boiled. <laughs> Rods are still down there. Clutches are set. Um, yeah, we've got to get that brew into that cup now without touching the kettle. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> yes, mate. You don't understand how nice that cup of tea is. Because <laughs> it is absolutely numb. That bite that uh, come on the crab bait just, there's literally two big bangs, and then it just like, well, nothing else. I oh, hope we might have a bite on the left rod, we might have a bite on the left rod. Cone in one hand, brew in the other hand, how are we gonna do this? I think we just had a bite on the left rod. I've got to shoot in 10 minutes because food's been ordered for 45 minutes time, and I'm about 30 to 40 minutes away from home. So I really haven't got long. But yeah, that big bang on the right rod was uh, two big bangs on that big crab and squid and cart mix. And then nothing. Um, I'll definitely be back in Anglesey. I've done nothing in Conway all day. Not even a nudge. I've been here, what, an hour, half hour. I've had a fish. I've had a few bites and a bang. You know, it's, it's just a different kettle of fish up here. It's just a different, it's just a different world to see fish in Anglesey and Oliad. You know, it's, it's, it's next level. I'm going to drink this bro, give them rods 10 minutes and um, see if something comes along. Well, we did just have a good bite on the left one as well. You know, I've had more bites here in, like I say, half hour than I've had in Conway and Landudno in the last week. <laughs> well, people, I've got to get off now. Well, I've got to get off in the next five, ten minutes. Um, 
the rods are still in. I'm still drinking my brew. But I've got to leave. So if you don't see me again, you'll see me in the next one. Um, after having that good bite here and having more action here in the last hour than I've had in my local area for the last week, uh, I think we will be ditching the Conway and Landudno trips for the next... I know at the beginning of this video I said I need a Conway card. On. I'm not leaving until I get one. Well, things change. I've come back onto Anglesey for the first time in about a month. And I've had um, a few bites and a bit of action. And it's just flat calm out there. Look at that. It's absolutely stunning. So uh, I'll be coming back onto the island for a few trips. I've got a caravan on the island as well on uh, Linagore's Fishery. It opens in five weeks, four or five weeks at the start of February. So um, six weeks in it. So I'll be spending every weekend on the island soon. I'll be spending, well, three nights out of the seven nights a week I'll be on the island from February so half my life will be on the island here by the Menai and Anglesey and all that so uh, as the lights get a bit as the nights get a bit lighter and the weather gets a bit warmer I'll be out at least a couple of times a week so um, don't forget to subscribe so you're going to see a lot of fishing I know it's a bit crap now in winter but you are going to see a lot of fishing through spring and summer from me because I'll spend half my life here li literally living on the Menai. <laughs> so uh, yeah, don't forget to write, comment, subscribe and all that bull crap and uh, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.